Hey, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to Life Mastery Decoded, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality with mind mastery, emotional management, and meditation. Welcome to today's podcast. Hey, ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode, where I hope today I am finding you developing yourself personally, professionally, and positively. If you are not developing yourself in those ways, and it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So I've been on this personal development journey for, it feels like about a thousand years. And it was early, early on, like I grew up in the 80s. And it was early on in my life that I realized that I was destined for something greater. It was something that I think I decided when I was about 12 years old, 11 or 12. And I've told the story in my other podcasts and I believe that it warrants a, I think warrants the right word, um, another, another mention of it here. And that is, I used to practice <laughs> speaking without knowing that that's really what I was doing, but practice speaking I would stand on our shed, which was basically a flat top single car garage that sat kind of in our backyard away from our house. And I would get up on there and I would pace back and forth. And that's actually what I do when I'm on stage is I pace back and forth and in front of this giant cornfield. And I would just talk about whatever was going on, whatever was happening in my life at that time. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know public speakers even existed. There's no technology. There's no computers. I grew up in a very, very, very small farm town. And I didn't know that public speaking was even a thing. And um, it was mostly for the rich and famous, but not for someone with the likes of me, right? And uh, so anyway, so that was one of the things that I would practice. And I remember thinking, sitting on the edge of the stage with my feet dangling, looking out over this giant field of corn and thinking, there's got to be a better way. And I think that that planted the seed, that that was a connection to me intuitively that says, you're, you're meant for something great. Like I always felt this burning thing inside me. I always felt that I was, I was meant for something bigger, something greater. And I never could really quite put my finger on it. Well, it wasn't until way later when I started to realize (laughs) books, and not just fiction, but personal development books. And in reading hundreds of thousands of personal development, you're like, really, Jen, uh, hundreds of thousands? I have, at least in my possession, 400, which is obviously only a fraction of 100 of 1,000. But I have read articles. I have watched videos. It is endless. Blogs, books online audio versions of books, library books. I, 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 can't even, I can't even express to you how much knowledge I take in. And every week, it's somebody new. Every week, I'm learning more and more and more. And my circle, my circle of knowledge is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think, okay, I got it. Okay. And I know that I don't have it. Like I have all this information. Obviously, there's a, a wealth of knowledge that I don't know, things that I don't know. But when I realized that books had knowledge in them, then I became obsessed and addicted to books. I couldn't put them down if I tried. And I would go to the library and I would check out 20 books and I would bring them home and I would scan through them and I would read them and I'd take notes and I would just get crazy about it. Any single area of your life that you're struggling with, there is a book, there is a person who wrote a book, did a course, did a blog or a video about that thing, overcoming those obstacles. And so I have been devoting my life when I started my personal training business, when I started my boot camp business, when I started this personal development business, I became a life coach. Then I became a healer. Now I've got this online business and the online store and the chakras for beginners and, and this community online with these women who are looking for success in their areas. I used to teach about parenting. I used to teach uh, personal training, nutrition, exercise, weight loss, uh, um, getting your body in shape for some sports event. Uh, it was it just kept growing and growing and growing. But what I'm realizing as I am in the cycle that I'm in, where I face a problem, 
and I dive headfirst into solving the problem. So I'm reading, Googling, YouTube. I find somebody. I'm like, oh, I kind of like this guy. I'm going to watch all of his videos. And I will binge watch 20, 30 of his videos. And a lot of them are, you know, 5, 10, 30 minutes long, whatever. And I'm taking notes. And I'm like, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm put these tools into practice. And then I think, I stand back and I go, how come these tools aren't working for me? How come I don't have the same results that he's saying, that he promises, that he's, he's selling or he's giving away or, or he's teaching? How come they're not working for me? And it, be, and it just begins kind of this vicious cycle for me. But yet the, some of the tools that I have pulled, I'm like, that works. This tool works. These, these 25 tools over here have worked in my parenting. These 25 have worked in my energy healing or these have worked in my business, right? But how come this guy's tools aren't working? How come I'm applying? He says that they're guaranteed. He says that, that it's going to be something that can work, works for anybody. But for whatever reason, I'm not getting the fast results that he's, quote, promising. Well, there's this thing called alignment. And if you are looking at somebody's path to success. No matter what the success is, a very general term here where it's success in parenting, success in relationships, success in your career, money, spirituality, uh, satisfaction, happiness, whatever. Whatever the path is. And I say, I'm watching this video. I'm hearing this guy's six simple steps. And I'm going to take these six simple steps and I should get the same results, right? Well, you're only going to get the same results if you have the same alignment that he had when he went through those same steps. So I look back at my other two over 200 podcasts now and I go, okay, but I'm giving people these six or three or five simple steps. If you just do this, you will get these results. And the results that I've given you are things that I have done that I have gotten great results. I look back at my life of 25 or 35 years and I go, I have come a long way. But I'm still in a growing stage. And I always will be. Even if I'm 97 years old and I'm going to die tomorrow, I will still. help me align, I can be very general and vague and say, do things that make you happy. That's going to help you to align. Do things that bring up your numbers. That to me was a very simple tool that I learned along my personal development journey that says, use a scale from one to 10 that will push you in that direction. That'll make you feel better. It gives you a very quick gauge of how you're feeling, how you are aligning. And then I, I talk about things like your collective number. If, if you stand back and look at your life lin on a linear scale and you stand back and look at the last 12 months, where do you spend the most of your time emotionally? Is it in happiness? Is it in joy? Or is it in chaos, overwhelm, worry? Is it in concern, doubt, pessimism? Is it in anger? Is it in depression? Is it in anxiety? You, you tell me. I can't tell. I don't know. You tell me. And give that general vibration a number. It's a three, let's say. Now, pause that, push that aside for a second, and I say, now go to your goals. Go to what success means to you. If you want success in whatever this particular area is, parenting, relationships, money, career, your weight, your health, and give that a number. Go there and be there, be in that goal, have achieved that goal in your mind and give that a number, a nine, okay? 
Now we stand back and we look at, on one side you have a three, and on the other side you have a nine. They don't match. The threes, no matter how many times you're a three, you're never, ever going to attract a nine. Never. Never. I used to tell this one class, I was teaching this master class, it was um, once a week, and it went on for over a year. And I met with these other women, and we talked about this, this moving up the vibrational scale. And she goes, well, I could be in a great mood, and I could be a nine that day. And I say, right, but collectively, look over the last 12 months collectively, on average, where are you on the vibrational scale? And she goes, well, typically I'm a three or a four, but occasionally I'm a nine. Right, I get it, okay. But that occasionally on a nine is going to bring you maybe one or two times a nine type thing. But the things that we attract in our life have to be consistent. It has to be more than just a one or a two uh, often type thing that I'm a, I'm a nine once in a while. That once in a while is going to get you a bonus at work, but it's not going to get you the new house. It's not going to be sustainable. It's going to squeak through and you're going to get this beautiful experience, but it's not going to be consistent. Okay. So when I had this group, we were in this room and I said, okay, so let's pretend up there is a loft, and I'm pointing up towards the ceiling. So up there is a loft, and I want you to stand on the ground right now, and I want you to jump up to that loft. And so everyone get out of your seats. There's five of us in the class. I said, everyone get out of your seats. And I want you to jump up to that loft. Go. And everyone just stood there looking at me. They're like, Jen, come on. This is stupid. This is ridiculous. We can't jump up there. It's 25 feet. Okay. And I said, how do you propose we get up there? There's a loft. Look at there's a thing. I mean, you can. There's a railing. How do you get up there? And someone goes, "We have to take the stairs." So then I say, "Okay, so now everybody go to the stairs and go up. And I want you to lean over the loft. I want you to wave to me so I know you got up there." And so they walk around the the uh, over the by you know the thing and go up the stairs and they go over the railing and they wave to me. How did you get up there? How did you? It's still 25 feet. How did you get up to that loft? And they said, "One." step at a time. Now I say, could you stay up there? And they will, yeah, you know, we could stay up here. Nothing's preventing you from coming down. I mean, let's just pretend everything that they need, food, water, shelter, everything they need is up there. Could you stay up there? Yes, they could stay up there. I said, okay, so now I'll come back down. So I came back down and sat down. And I said, okay, now let's, let's put this into a very quick analogy. Down here is your collective down here is where you spend most of the time on the vibrational scale. Down here is your three. Up there is your new house, your money, the love of your life, the happiness, the job, the security, the health. How are you going to get up there? And when you get up there, you have to stay up there. You now have to be collectively up there. And I also want you to understand that the collective moves along with you. So now you're a three, and then you move up the scale to a nine. That nine now becomes the new three. Because there's always going to be something at the other end that's going to be, I now want a million dollars a year, not just a hundred grand. I now want to be the executive of that business, not just an employee. I now want to have my partner do these things and this for me, not just what they did before. Okay? So know that the scale is always going to move with you. So you get up to the loft and you're going to turn around and there's going to be another 25 foot loft above you with another set of stairs. That's what I mean. Okay. Hopefully you understood that analogy. So when I'm talking about personal development, I get into this, what I like to call this spiral or this cycle. I'm faced with a problem. I go into problem solving mode, which I love. That's one of my favorite things to do. Move into problem solving mode. Now I'm in problem solving mode. I Google the crap out of it. I YouTube every aspect of this problem. And then I come over here and I start applying the solutions to that problem. And I go, okay, so now what am I going to do? Here's, a, here's an example. I love riding my bike. I love it. I have three bikes. I have four bikes, but I have three that I ride on a regular basis. And they're all a little bit different. I have a mountain bike that's kind of my enduro so I can ride on the road, I can ride it off-road. Then I have a triathlon training bike that's strictly on-road, 
bike. And then I have like this cruiser type bike that's good for just like some small town cruising on their little sidewalks and stuff. And uh, I love it. I love bike riding with a passion. I love it. So my bike, I got from my dad as a graduation present from 1990. That's when I graduated. So this bike is really old. It's really heavy, but it's my favorite bike and it has a lot of emotional attachment. I love this bike with a passion. And I've had it and I've been fixing it and I take good care of it and whatever. Anyway, so I had it put in my shed and for whatever reason, the chain is complete rust. It's probably the original chain from the bike, but I'm like, ooh, I think I need to replace this. So I start YouTubing it. So there's my problem. I wanna ride my bike, this chain is rusty, I need to, I wanna figure this out, and maybe I could get a new chain, not sure. Okay, there's a problem. So I start YouTubing it, I start Googling it, I start understanding. Now I fix my bike lots of times, I know a lot about bike mechanics, and I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. So anyway, so fast forward, I decide I'm gonna take the chain apart at the link, that comes apart where you can break the chain and I'm going to soak it in vinegar until the chain, you know, the rust eats away and whatever. And then I'm going to clean it and soap it and, and I'm going to reattach it and I'm going to lube it. That was my game plan. Okay. So I had a problem. I YouTubed it. I learned some things and now I'm going to apply this new plan. Okay. So I applied the plan and it was probably a course of a week of doing this whole thing because I'm letting this soak in this vinegar, which took the longest amount of time. It's eaten through the rust, whatever. And now it's done. So I'm putting the bike back on. I get some lube, put the lube on, and now I'm ready. And up in northern Michigan in April, the weather is very spotty. Some days it's 70, some days it's 35. Some days it's pouring down rain. So the last few days have been really, really cold, really, really windy or rainy. I'm not riding. Today, it was absolutely beautiful. And it was 70 degrees this morning. I pop up out of bed at 9 o'clock. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to get a bike ride in before our day starts. So I pop out of bed. And I go and get all my stuff, get my gloves, get my helmet, change my clothes, get my shoes on. I get the bike out and I'm, I wheel it out through the backyard and up to the driveway. I put my feet in the pedals. I go to crank the first crank and the chain breaks. I look down, I'm like, immediately I think, oh, it probably just came apart at the, at the, um, the link. That's the one that comes apart, right? That's supposed to. I look at the chain and the chain literally broke someplace else, not fixable. And I'm standing there, I'm like, dang, all this work and all this time I put into this chain. It took me a week cleaning and scrubbing and soaping and soaking and breaking it and putting it together and getting all these tools out because I don't have a chain break tool, so I don't even go into that detail. But it was kind of like, other than getting a chainsaw, I'm like, right? And I was really kind of bummed and it's really nice. And I knew that there were storms coming. So I go inside, I tell Amy, I'm like, ah, I can't ride and thing and all this work. And I broke the chain. She goes, can't you put it back together? And I said, look, you know, I said it broke. Here's the, here's the, the, the link that's supposed to come apart. I said, look where it broke. So I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? And I start to really start on this downward spiral. And I'm like getting upset. Why did this happen? Why did this happen when this is the thing I'm so in alignment with? I'm so upset. I put all this work, all this time. I did all this education. I aligned with this thing. I was, it, the whole process had some, had some chunky parts in it as I'm trying to get the chain off and it's completely rusty. So I had some chunky parts and trying it, but it was really this amazing experience of taking this whole chain apart and working with my bike, you know, and getting dirty and greasy. And then I go to ride it and the chain breaks. And I'm thinking through this whole process, I'm like, I am heading down. I was a 10 getting my bike out after a really long, brutal, cold winter. It's the first day I'm going to go ride my bike. And I go to pedal the first pedal. I don't even get a full crank in the chain breaks. And I'm like, oh man, I went from a 10 to a one in about six seconds. I bring my bike back into the basement and I go back upstairs and I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? And I start to kind of throw this emotional fit and I'm recognizing it and I'm like trying to move this energy out. I'm getting really mad. I'm really frustrated. And then I'm like, I'm a one right now. And that was the thing that Amy and I are really starting to work on is, is checking in with our energy. I'm a one. And she's like, what are we going to do? She goes, why don't you call some of the bike places, some of the bike mechanics and see if they can get your bike fixed, even if it's sometime this week. And I'm like, yeah, but this week, not kidding you guys, it was 77 degrees yesterday, 70 degrees today, and it's going to be 50 tomorrow. And the rest of the week is like a high of 30. It's crazy. The weather up here is crazy. So I'm like, yeah, I guess. So I call this bike mechanic. I used to work for this mechanic or this, this store 
long, long time ago. So I called them and I'm like, hey, any chance you guys can get me in and just give it a chance and look at it, whatever. Now remember, this bike is really old. So fast forward to the end. Yes, we can get you in. Um, good news is that it's only gonna cost you about 60 bucks and bad news, we don't have the sprocket, so you're gonna have to go to the other store and get it. And I said, okay, so 60 bucks. I said, and they can fix it? So yep, so we drive to the other store. I have to get the rear, the rear uh, cassette, which is all the gears, the sprockets for the back, because mine is so worn. So get a rear sprocket and a new chain, 60 bucks. And I'm like, sweet. And so we go drive over there. It's going to be about an hour. Get all done. Here's your new bike. Here's your sprocket. Here's your chain. And I'm like, I'm, and they have this place you can ride right out behind their store. And so I'm riding the bike. And I'm like, it feels amazing. Immediately back up to a 10. Now, why do I tell you this story? I did a couple of things. I did sink down emotionally. I did sink down. I did a check-in with Amy. I'm like, I'm really, really bummed. I'm really upset. I'm really trying to figure out this path to success. I was in alignment with riding my bike today. Now, I did get to ride for, I don't know, five minutes around. They have some trails and some jumps and, and just around their parking lot behind their store. And we're going to go to the grocery store real quick. And we're going to go home. And I'm going to go for a ride. I did get to ride around behind the store. But I didn't get to ride when I got home because a storm started. Now it started raining. But I was okay because you know what? Now my bike is fixed. So I can go anytime, right? If it happens to be nice enough, I can go tomorrow. But my point is, I did a check-in. I brought my energy in. I brought my energy back up. I went from a 1 to a 10 in a matter of like an hour because I was able to call them and get things fixed. But the, the formula for that was the check-in part. Because if I would have stayed in that low vibration... I probably wouldn't have been able to either, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been open. I wouldn't have gotten my bike fixed. I mean, it's Sunday. I'm recording this. It was Sunday. And I got my bike fixed this morning at, I don't know, it was 11 o'clock or something. By the time we got into town and, you know, I went from one store to the other, across town. But I was able to get it fixed for 50 bucks. So, but that check-in is what helped me. So when I look at personal development, I look at a couple of different things. One is where, it, where are you collectively? Where is the thing that you want? And how can you move up incrementally, like going up the stairs, how can you move up incrementally so you can continue to now collectively be a higher number to attract the thing that you want? How can you do that? What can you do? Then the next is, checking in with yourself because this is where the progress starts to happen. If I am collectively a three, then periodically throughout the day, I need to constantly be checking in. When bad things happen, before bad things happen, after dinner, before bed, whenever, all the time, have a partner work with you or join our Lady Rising group and you literally can say, I need a check-in. I'm a five. And we can support you and say, okay, What's it going to take for you to be a six? That's it. And then you stop and look, okay, I got I to gotta get out of here. I got to go get a drink of water. I have, to, uh, I have to stop talking about this thing. I have to distract myself with something fun. If you're like me and you love problem solving, it is the hardest part is to walk away from that. But I will tell you this, problem solving from a level three is not going to help you get to the nine. You have to raise your vibration high enough so you can see the new solutions. That makes sense? If I'm collectively a three, that's pretty much where the problem came from in the first place is from me being a three. If I collectively move my vibration up and I'm a seven, eight, or nine, that's where the solution is going to be. This is why meditation is so important. Because in meditation, it gets me so present, the problem doesn't exist. In my mind, that problem can go away. I can, you know, that's like when, when we get really upset with ourselves or we get upset with our partner or our job or something, we want to take a nap, right? You get angry, you get mad, you get pissed off, and then you're like, I'm going to go take a nap. That nap actually allows you to reset. Right there, as you're getting ready to close your eyes and take your, take your mind off of everything, is to come back and go, listen, I need to raise my vibration. That's my intention. That's what I'm going to go do. So in this nap, I'm just like, I'm going to look at things that make me feel better. And now collectively, we work on bringing our numbers up high enough 
that that's where solutions can take place. If you need support with this, check out my Facebook group, Lady Rising. In that group, we are supporting each other. When you come in and you're asked how you heard about this group, tell them you came in through Jen's podcast, okay? And you can, you can take this podcast and go, hey, I don't understand what you mean about this, Jen. Can you help me? Or it's a check-in time. I'm a five, I'm a three, I'm a negative 14, and allow us to support you. Because if you look back at the 12 months of your life and you say, I'm collectively a one, that's why you're attracting things that are a one. So together, we can move forward. We can take one step at a time and we can move our lives forward if you allow us as a community to support you. That's something big. When I was standing on that shed, that cornfield is what I'm trying to grow. I am trying to grow each corn stalk is a woman on this planet who is looking for a community, who is looking for a leader they can trust and a community that they can get support from. That's exactly my drive. That's my purpose and that's what I'm doing. And I'm here for you. And until you reach out to me, you're never going to know that. But I'm standing right here with my hand out saying, hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to support. I'm here to teach. That's what I'm doing. I hope you join us. I hope that we see you on a sister call. And if nothing else, that we just see you in the group and ask your questions. Be out there, extend yourself, and start to grow collectively. If you liked this episode, please share this with three of your friends. And if you like this episode and look forward to future episodes, please consider making a small monthly donation to help support this podcast. If you're looking for a community to join and have more access to me, then consider joining one of my communities. Chakras for Beginners is an energy-based community that is highly active and growing every day. Lady Rising is a sistership community where the focus is on spiritual support and empowerment. We hold monthly calls and talk about topics just as like today's episode. We also have an online store where we can meet your meditation and chakra needs with products for your journey. You can visit us at www.themeditationroomtc.com. Thank you for joining me and being a valued listener.